Hello everyone, Michaela here with Aria. This is a four-year-old Dutch warm blood mare who has been in training for the last couple of months. And today we wanna to share with you the pinwheel pattern. This is a pattern that I designed for my training horses years ago because it offers something for every horse and every rider at pretty much every le level. So whether you are looking to develop a good baseline trot where your horse can travel with rhythm and relaxation, put more suppleness through the rib cage, cause your horse to seek the canter and see it as a positive release or build in walk to canter transitions, this pattern is gonna meet you wherever you're at and help you build more connection with your horse to your seat aids and find positive impulsion moving forward. All right, so there are many layers to this pattern. So layer number one is going to be, can I walk to each pole that's laid out and have my horse halt and have a little rest with their nose over the center of each pole? If you've ever ridden your horse over a line of trot poles or even a single pole, I'm sure you've experienced them trying to side swipe or dive out of that. So it's really important that before we add any speed, the horse is super clear that the center of the pole is the sweet spot. There's some good vibes that live here. And this is the spot on the pole that we want them seeking as we're walking, trotting, or cantering over it. So I'm gonna take Aria to the center of each pole and just introduce her to the sweet spot that lives right over the center before I add any speed. Now, the other thing that I love about layer one is that it's gonna help me get a read on my horse and let me know, is my horse connected to my seat? If I have to use my reins to stop them at the pole, I'm not ready to add speed. So I wanna make sure that my horse is so connected to my seat and they have good grounded energy and I can halt just off my seat. So I'm just gonna back her up there. That actually was not her fault. Um, there, my timing was a little bit off. So little backup deal, she's not wrong, especially if it was a rider error, but I am gonna do one more just to make sure that we end on a good note. So I'm following forward with my seat and my hand. When I want a downward transition to halt, I'm just gonna stop moving my seat. And there she sought harmony with me and halted with me. So layer one, check. Layer two, is gonna be now can I travel in the trot over the center of each pole? So I'm going to trot on over the center of each sweet spot and I'm really letting the poles and the pattern do the work. I just wanna trot on this big circle going over the sweet spot until she finds some rhythm and relaxation within her trot. This is what I call a baseline trot. A baseline trot should be so balanced and have such good impulsion that it feels like it would be just as easy to walk as it would be to canter. They're really traveling, ready for anything, in balance, seeking rhythm and relaxation. So I'm not fussing with her face, I'm not nudging her with my legs. I'm just saying, here's a circle. Can you maintain gait, maintain direction, seek relaxation? Now she's blown out, she's stretched. She's done a great job maintaining her rhythm. So we're gonna land in a halt off my seat and let her soak in the sweet spot. And I picked this pole on purpose, although it was my fault that I didn't aim her well in the halt on the previous layer, I wanted to have just one more pass where we rest here and prove to her this is indeed the sweet spot right here. Okay, so layer number two, check. Layer number three is now gonna start talking to the horse's rib cage. So I'm gonna walk her to the cone and then side pass off of my right leg until we're back at the center. So I really wanna settle in between the sideways. So we walk, halt, settle. Then sideways off my right leg. Once we reach the center, halt and settle. I wanna make sure she's not assuming we're gonna walk off. She waits for me and then I cue her. Now the front door is open and we can travel forward together. So I'm gonna make this pass at each cone till we've made 
it all the way around the figure. And each time I'm going downward transition to halt, I'm really testing that it's off my seat and off my energy, not the reins. Sideways to settle. Now I open the front door and we can walk on to the next cone. Good girl. Off my right leg. And settle. Now we can walk on. <laughs> She's very expressive with her sneezes. But I love hearing that. It tells me that I'm helping her release any tension she was holding through her rib cage, or maybe helping her release her breath if she was holding it through the sideways. So now completed layer three. Layer four now, I'm gonna start playing with bending lines to straight lines. So we're gonna circle right around the pole and between the cone. Now that's a pretty small circle. So if at any point I feel like for this big four-year-old warm blood, that's not achievable, I can just go to the outside of the cone. And that's really the beauty of this pattern is it's set up to be precise, but it's very adaptable. If you need to adapt to make it attainable, adjust it. This pattern and these circles are designed to promote suppleness and relaxation in your horse's body. If they don't feel like it's achievable, it's gonna add tension and that is not the goal. So we've got small circle, bended line to a bigger circle. Really important what I'm feeling for is that she maintains the rhythm through that transition of small circle to big circle. If your horse isn't ready to trot this, you can do the whole figure in the walk first, but ultimately we wanna to build to trot. Now this is starting to feel pretty good to me. So I'm starting to think about adding layer five, which is gonna be introducing the canter cue. So horses are like humans, they want the path of least resistance. And if I were to think from a horse's point of view, trotting this small circle with engagement is actually harder than cantering. So by doing this circle first and then presenting the question, would you like to canter? She's gonna go, heck yeah, that's easier than trotting the small circle. If she didn't take me up on the suggestion to canter, I would not push it because I want the canter to be perceived as the release point in the pattern. So if she had said, no, I don't want a canter, I would say, you know what, that's fine. We can continue trotting these small circles with engagement and I would just re-offer it every time we went on the big circle line. So she feels pretty good to me. She's committed to the canter. She's blowing out. She's seeking relaxation. She's staying on my line. So I'm gonna bring her back to trot and immediately go back to layer two, which is find rhythm and relaxation in the trot over the sweet spot. Talk about this all the time with my students that the increase in speed often brings up an increase in emotions. And whatever we release our horses on is what we're reinforcing. So if we cantered and then I dropped to trot, and then just quit and she was emotional about it, that's what she's gonna soak on. I want her to go, I cantered and I was able to reestablish my baseline trot before we quit. So I'm starting to prepare for my halt. I'm gonna do it at that pole, same one as last time, and make sure she can come down off my seat, no reins. Pretty good for a four-year-old, pretty good for her second time ever doing this pattern. But the beauty of it is that it shows you where your holes are. So if your horse doesn't understand how to rate back off your seat, 
If the horse doesn't understand how to follow your suggestion of the turn, if your horse doesn't understand your leg aid for sideways, none of this is possible. So this pattern will really put to purpose the fundamentals and the basics that every young horse should have.